Hi, I'm Darren from Metal Roofing Online. Today I'm going to be installing the barge cabbings on a clip lock roof. In our last episode, we installed the clip lock sheets. Um, you, before you get started on the barge cappings, you just want to make sure that they're all in good condition and that they're all stop ended at the top. That's the most important part. Um, but I've checked all that now, so I'll get going. Um, with this clip lock roof, I managed to get the uh, ribs to finish nice and close to the ends. Uh, so my barge cabbing doesn't have to be very big on this occasion. It just has to cover that first rib, basically. So I've made it nice and small. If you've found yourself that you've finished, uh, you know, a couple of hundred mil or something away from the end, then really you want to run a strip of timber up the side here to support the barge capping or it's just going to be swinging in the air. Um, yeah, if it's an apron flash and the same thing, if there's a wall here, you need to put a strip of timber down there to support your flashing. But I don't need to on this occasion. So with all the barge cappings, whether it's a clip lock roof or a corrugated roof or trim deck, you really want to just make it as neat as possible. Obviously it's got to be watertight, that's the number one, and then you just want to make it as neat as possible. So you just work out along the way of how you're going to make it neat. With this end here, I think it's best if I turn this end of the barge capping down to close off in case any birds get in there. So I'll get that sorted. Okay, that should look all right. I'll just pull this plastic off now because it's going it's to get a bit trapped. As you can see with the barge capping that I've got here, I decided to go with the hook. Um, that's mainly because I think it looks neater personally. 
and I'll run the gutter past so that the hook meets up with the um, edge of the gutter there. But you can do yours differently if you like. You can run the gutter, stop it flush with the end of the fascia and just put a break on the end here, which means you can put fixings along the fascia. I don't think that looks as neat, but it doesn't really um, make much difference. How you're gonna do it, depends what you prefer. I'll just put a rivet in there to hold it in place. And we'll go to the other end. So if you watched one of my other videos when I did the barge cappings on the corrugated roof, it's the same, it's the same theme really here at the edge. When I mark this end bit here to form the lap for the other one to join over, I just make it 10 mil past the edge of this fascia here so that the other barge capping which has got a hook on it meets up nicely with it. Cut this bottom bit on a 45 degree angle. Now we leave about a 20 mil lap on this one. Okay, depending on how close the rib is to the edge, it's, it's more so along, along this side. So I really need to get a screw somewhere near the middle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna screw this side of the rib down into the batten. But I won't do it up really tightly because it'll dent the top here. We just wanna do it just so that it hits. Now I've already marked where those battens are. So that should make it nice and easy. I think if I put it 40 mil from this edge, it'll be nice and strong. So that I go down into the timber I've got a 65mm screw here, 
because the rib height's 40 mil. couple more rivets at the end here. Okay, that's come up nice and solid. I'll do the, exactly the same at the other end and then we'll tackle the top bit, which is a little bit harder. This part of the stop end just gets in the way, so you've got to cut that little top bit out there. Okay, I'll grab my next piece. One thing I probably should mention is these barge cappings along the side here and up the top, they're all custom made. We make them all here in our factory. So I've decided on how far I want this front bit to be and how far the, the top bit to be and we've custom made them. If you want yours to come down further and be a lot wider at the top there, all you need to do is draw it up the shape that you want and we can custom make it here for you. Same as the other side, I'm going to drill down. I'm going to miss the rib and I'm going to drill down into that batten, which I've already marked out. Okay. 
Okay, 50 mil this time. The other side I went 40 mil because there was a rib there, but this one's only got the starting rib, so it's only a half a one. Pre-drill the hole. Perfect. And the other one. 50 mil. And I haven't got a rib to rivet into here, so I'll have to put another screw at the bottom here. There we go, that's nice and solid like the other side. Okay, now we've got the top one, which is a little bit more tricky. make sure that's not going to fall off. Now before I get started on this one, what I've done when we've custom made this one is I've made it on the same angle as the roof pitch. So this bit should sit straight here and then I've made that a bit tighter. With the downturn here I've made that 45 mil and slightly open so that the water really runs away. The bottom of this should go all the way down into the flat part of the pan of the sheet once I've cut out all the ribs and then that water should clear away nicely. Now unlike the side ones here which I made quite narrow, I've made this top part, I think it was 200 mil. Yeah I've made that top part 200 mil. I think the regulations say you're supposed to do a minimum of 150 mil from, from the end of a sheet, the coverage of the flashing, so I've made it even further to be sure that we really get this water away from the end of the sheets. Because if a roof's gonna leak, then it's usually at the top there where the water blows underneath. You wanna make sure this is done properly. Okay. concerned this is going to fall off while I'm marking it all out so I might leave it up the top here and hop up on the roof and mark all those ribs out and cut those ribs out now. Just got to make sure that it really stays in the same position because once you start marking the ribs if it moves at all then it's going to mess up all your marks. Now we're on top of the roof you can see what I'm about to do. Now I've got to mark out where all these ribs are and then cut this flashing out to suit those ribs. So you want to mark them pretty much exactly. Mark the top of the rib and then the bottom of the rib on the bottom of the flashing. Okay, I'll grab my tin snips.
Okay, I'll just make these ends look a bit neater. Okay, that's the hard bit done. I'll just put that into position, then I'll be able to hop back down there. Okay, pretty happy with that. I'll just get started on making this edge look neat now. Should do us there. Okay, so we need to cut this piece on a forty five like we did with that one so that they meet up properly on the corner there. I'm just grabbing my drill.
Okay. I'll finish off the other side. Okay, where they lap here in the top two corners, I prefer to put some silicon under the joint. So I'll drill all these rivet holes out and then I'll put some silicon in there and then put the rivets in afterwards. So I might just put one in the middle first in case, in case it moves at all. Yeah, if I put a rivet in the middle here, it'll hold it in place when I do the two ends. get rid of all that swarf there too. It's going to leave little rust stains on your roof if you don't. Do the other corner the same. Okay, I've drilled all those holes out now. I'll get the silicon gun and we'll put some silicon between the join there. With any situation like this on a roof where you've got two flashings overlapping, it's best to put this silicon between the join. Tidy that up. Okay, now you want to make sure it's this last flash in the top one is as secure as you can make it. Uh, even if it was an apron flashing up against a wall here, it's the same thing. Bring it out nice and far and then cut these ribs out and take that edge right down into the pan. It just stops any leaves or, or any water blowing underneath here and then getting inside the building. So our last part here is to screw it off. So I'm going to pre-drill some holes and then I'm going to put some small screws straight through the rib of the, um, of the barge capping here. Obviously it's a bit different to the side ones, we've gone down into the timber battens but you don't need to here, all you need to do is go straight down into the rib, the top rib of the sheet.
Okay, and lastly, I just need to put screws in there. I'll get rid of all that swarf first so that we don't have any rust stains on the roof. Okay, thanks for watching me install the barge cappings on the clip lock roof. Uh, just in summary, I suppose I'll just show you um, at, the, at the start here, it was very crucial that you get your measurements on the barge capping right when you measure it up. As I said during the video, these barge cappings are all custom made. We make them here. So you wanna get your sizings right before you install them. I'll just show you how to draw these out. These side ones that I did, I've made 90 mil down the face with a 10 mil hook on them. And then across the top here, I've made it 120 with a 40 mil downturn to go into the pan. These were in the color monument and you just need to put an arrow to the side which the color was on. And when you're measuring them, you always allow a couple of hundred mil more than what you need because as, as you could see during the video, there was a lot of cutting and bending up the top and the bottom there. So you want that extra length in case you cut any piece wrong, you've still got enough. So these sheets were 2.5. So I made these barge cappings 2.7 and they're easy enough to cut back as, you, as you're doing it. So both the sides, so there was two of those because I did both sides. And then the top piece there, I'll show you how I did that one. That was 90 mil down again with a 10 mil hook. Then I made this top bit on a bit of an angle to follow the slope of the roof. There's a five degree pitch on this roof. So I made that angle in there 85 degrees. And then this top bit, the side bits are made 40 mil, but the top piece, so that it ensures it comes all the way down to the pan of the sheet, I made that 45 mil. And I did that on a little bit of an angle too, so that the water flowed away. And that top piece there was 200 mil, so that it really gets the water away from the ends of the sheet. Uh, the building was 4.5, so I made that flashing 4.7, and the color was on top again. Okay. So that's basically the part that you want to make sure you get right at the start of the ordering of the flashings. And then as you could see during the video, I showed you how to install them. Um, there's a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of work in it, but hopefully it helps with the video I made there. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel. And um, yeah, thanks for watching.